Hey everyone, welcome to Figure Fantasy. So it's me, Koto Misaka. Time review and build and strategy guide for her. So to get you guys in the right track on how to construct and build her, I'm I'm actually finished with her. As you can see, um, I'm at uh, five diamonds for her, but I wouldn't mind getting extra copies for this function the the painting function of uh, the figure so it gives you uh, additional bonuses so this applies to any figure that you have so by the way guys before i forget please join our discord uh, chat or server it's in the description of this video so please join us there and we will discuss whatever you want to discuss so starting off with her skills so in terms of her basic attack, it's called Flash of Lightning. Range is nine slots. Attack prioritizes the frontmost enemy in the current row. Attack speed is fast. Deals additional damage to enemies with Dengenki Marks. Dengenki Marks is um, related to her passive skill. Later, we'll talk about that. Upgrade effect is level two. Bonus boost the damage from basic attacks by 25 and level three is the same for a total of 50 percent boost of attack next is her ultimate which is railgun initial energy is 50 attacks the enemies in the current row of the target when unleashing the ultimate one two three those are basically stacks uh, gain a stack of raijin and awaken new abilities so you will see um um, when you play her, there are actually three icons on top of her head. So those are the stacks. So uh, it will tell you that you've reached the third stack already and the third stack would would trigger. Okay, so again, gain a stack of Regin and awaken new abilities. One stack of Regin, basic attack deals. Sorry. Basic attack deals. Splash damage to units in the same row. That's only the first stack. The, sec the two stack and three stack effect are currently disabled if you only have this. But once you get it at level two, two stacks of Regen. After unleashing the ultimate triggers, all lightning strikes upon targets with the Genki marks. This is actually related again to the passive will, which we will cover later. And basic attacks deal splash damage to units in the same row. The, the three stack effect is currently disabled if you're only up to here. Then once you unlock the three stack, three stacks of Raijin. Raijin, when lightning spear is triggered, launch another lightning spear that attacks the enemy with the lowest health in the current row. Each stack of Raijin also boosts her attack speed, speed by 25%. Okay, so this is what I've been talking about. So Lightning Spear fires a Lightning Spear every 8 seconds, dealing damage to all enemies in the same row as the current target and inflicts a Ding Genki mark. Okay, so this mark will be placed by your passive. Upgrade effect, Lightning Spear triggers again whenever her basic attack lands a crit. So take note, you need to... Increase her crit probably up to, you know, uh, above 50% to trigger it more than 50%. Level 3, the Lightning Spear deals damage to all enemies in the same row and current target and inflicts a Dengenki mark. And uh, next is a uh, special Electromaster boost damage by 15% when there is no surrounding enemies. So upgrade effect boost attack by 5% and crit chance by 10%. Boost damage by 25 when there is no surrounding enemy. So, again, what do you think over a kit? I think it's spectacular alone. Um, I just realized that sh she's not competing with uh, she's not competing with Zerola. Zerola is actually a boss killer uh, rather than mob killer because if it's only a single target, it benefits Zerola. As for her. She she will benefit more if it's multiple targets. So again, for 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 the the subscriber, the viewer that mentioned that she is more of a Vazerwin than Zerola, actually I agree with you, but not all of it. Uh, probably a Vazerwin eighty percent or ninety percent. So similar. So again, she is kind of a different dimension on your. Tenma team, uh, Zerola and her can actually go hand in hand. And also for Vazerwin. So three of them are 
a good trio for Militarist for Tenma. Okay, moving on to this girl's strength and weakness. So definitely she's going to have good attack. She's going to have uh, good um, health and good defense as well. This is actually due to my build already. But again, uh, she's going to be ha having a high attack. The health, by the way, um, is one of her weakness because when I first had her, um, she's so squishy at the back. I just This is actually due to the benefit of uh, equipping her with gear already. That is why she's in an A. But technically, she's squishy. So again, her weakness would be her health. So moving on to parts. As for her parts, um, there are two um, sets or three sets. So for her four-piece set, I would recommend a attack set. I know her attack is fast. I suggest that you you still increase her speed because there are certain triggers when she attacks frequently, not really attacks damage. Uh, attack attacks frequently, not really on her attack damage. So initially, my recommendation is going to be um, attack speed set. Next is going to be attack. If you guys are are building her for a more of uh, focusing on her ultimate so definitely you'll need an ultimate set so but i'm not really recommending the ultimate set because that ultimate set is tied to her exclusive badge which i will explain later why it's it's actually bothering me okay so again recommending is um quick attack then attack set for the four piece definitely for the two piece set you'll be needing her um, you'll be needing to give her a critical set. There, this is not an exemption. So this should be put in here or you should add the critical set it, just in case if you don't want to use the other 4P set. Uh, it depends upon you. But my combination is either qu uh, quick attack or attack plus, cri plus crit. So that is my recommendation in terms of parts. In terms of badge... I'm definitely recommending the Eternal Nightmare Badge. This is actually available already. So, boost attacks. My build for her is more on the attack speed. Boost attack speed by 20%. Basic attacks have a 21% chance to bounce lightning off four times. And each time dealing damage equal to 100% attack. So, this is my recommendation. The other recommendation that I am giving you guys is go to badges so if you don't have a yellow badge definitely go with this one um this is this is more towards the ultimate so end time ultimate badge this is what i equip zarola with if you want to focus on ultimate my only concern is this one her exclusive badge which is by the way this one is centered towards ultimate as well so the wearer recovers for energy after casting a lightning spear where while also granting the ally the low uh, ally with the lowest health percentage of electromagnetic shield to 320 percent of her attack so um i don't see her as a defensive you know defensive figure i see her as more of an attack so definitely i would suggest going with eternal nightmare badge over this one and also this is very hard to get because i'll show you in the store in the collab store it is here it is locked under 400 progress what do you mean by 400 progress mr warden um it's uh actually here this is what they mean by 400 progress so you need to unlock up to 400 to be able to get that one. So if you don't have any plans of spending or you don't have any plans of spending beyond 200 after getting her here after getting her sister here, then definitely uh, you won't get that badge. The the what do you call this? the the exclusive badge for mikoto so those are my badge suggestions in terms of um, team composition so first and foremost she needs a good defender 
um, Ayani could be good in front of her, uh, Megan as well, Crucis as well. So any good defender would do really as long as they can hold a rush of mobs going towards Mikoto. Okay. Also, the other one that is really recommended for her to pair with is Mako. Because Mako, it, as you can see here, so she can... No, is it here? Yeah, it's here. It's in her passive. So boost adjacent allies lifesteal by 20, which um, it's good for Mikoto, and their crit chance by 12%, which is also very good for Mikoto. So again, Mako, Zephyr, obviously for... Zephyr is obviously good for additional energy, additional health, and obviously Kuroko, which we most of us don't have yet, is actually one of the best figures to pair with her. So, what are my final thoughts for this girl? Um, I think she, she, they, they, they actually built her well. She brings again a different dimension, not really a different, a unique one, but she brings multiple abilities from different figures. So she, it's a combination of several figures towards her, but it's more improved. Um, increase her crit more than 51% or more than 50%. Then add more attack speed if you wish to build her with attack, attack gear, attack speed. Um, passive, her passive it deals very consistent damage. And um, I like how her passive is built. You don't you really don't need to focus on her ultimate. And you can build her toward ultimate. You know, focusing on ultimate or focusing on her attack speed or attack or basic attack. Okay, this is going to be just a trial and sample on how big her range is. I tried this run already. I haven't cleared it because of this uh, boss bunny who gives <laughs> shared health to everybody. So, just going to be demoing how big of a, you know, uh, how big of a help she is, especially for mobs how big um, the scope of her damage is uh, and how quick she attacks. As you can see there, uh, I can see her attack. <laughs> so she, she throws lightning here and there. If you built her well in terms of attack speed, you just have to take care of her health because her health is pretty much low. Defense is good, but again, her attack speed really and her passive really helps you shred your enemies so 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 far i've had i haven't really geared her you know optimized her gear yet once i've optimized her gear probably i could clear this stage um but for now as you can see there um the stacks the three stacks on her head that is the indicator so again, she is going to have damage all over the place as long as she's actually good when you place her in the middle. So that is it. Can't clear this stage so far, but if you've seen how quickly she can deal damage, how quickly she can, um, you know, trigger her passive, although her passive is every eight seconds, but again, um, both passive and attacks are really, really good for her. Um, if you go that direction in terms of her build. So anyway, guys, um, thank you very much for staying this far. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, guys, because this really helps my channel a lot. Thank you. Stay safe. Take care. This is The Warden and happy weekend.